and you left in September. Were you disappointed at how it ended? Would you have done anything differently? I was disappointed. I was, uh, I was, uh, I was disgusted actually. I'm Dino Mamria, and this is in the manager's office. Delighted to be here with Dino Mamria for in the manager's office. Dino, thanks so much for having us at Oldham here today. Before we delve into your managerial career, can you just tell us a bit about what life was like in Tunisia growing up? And uh, is it true you, you got a trial when a lorry driver wrote your name on the back of a matchbox? Yeah, it is true. I, I, you know, uh, I, I grew up uh, more or less in the desert. Uh, you play in the sun bare feet. As a young, young boy, we got a big factory uh, around us, which is uh, for wheat, I think, uh, grain and wheat. And, uh, and you get some lorries uh, coming over. They stay overnight, park there, and we play. There's a football pitch around them. And yeah, I got spotted there by a fan of one of the big clubs in Tunisia, and he's asking my name and all the rest of it. And, uh, and yeah, that's probably how we started. And uh, he was a fan of one of the big clubs in Tunisia, and he's gone back to his club and told him, listen, I've seen this boy. Uh, he's, uh, he's going to be something and, uh, and obviously two years later this club came for me and uh, I was playing for my local team then and they watched me and they invited me over. My dad, uh, God bless him, wouldn't let me go. He wanted me to focus on my uh, school first. Uh, I, I was, uh, I think uh, from f 14, I think I first got spotted and then at 16 this club came in for me. Uh, CSS, I remember, Club Faxien. Uh, and then... Uh, my, my dad wouldn't allow me, he says, uh, concentrate on your schooling. And then uh, two years later, uh, another club came in for me and, uh, and obviously I had to make a big choice there. And I had uh, to quit more or less my study to go and focus on my football. But it was very unusual in Tunisia at that time. It was uh, Tunisia, there was only a, a league of 12 teams at the time, the first to the top division there. And they're the big club, they're all uh, from the, probably the north and the, and the coast. Uh, anything else, we, we lower leagues. Uh, and, uh, and if you are from the, the capital Tunis, they had big four teams. And then the coast, uh, by the sea, they had uh, four, five, six teams. And that was too far from where I grew up. And it was like uh, almost impossible for you to be spotted at one of these big clubs because the uh, scouting network wasn't really uh, there at the time. You had to be, I don't know how, <laughs> but I made it. And then it was at Burnley, you were still playing, you got a taste of coaching uh, with the academy. Yeah. I think you developed players such as Joe Rodriguez and Richard Chaplow, I think yeah. as well. Yeah. Did this experience, and you did your coaching badges quite early as well, as, as you were playing. Did this well, experience sort of, sort of cement in your mind you wanted to become a manager when you would eventually stop playing? Yeah, it happened. Uh, again, it's, um, you have to be proactive, I think. Uh, I had a bad injury when I first came to Burnley. I was out for 18 months, something like that. Yeah. yeah. So I was out injured a long time and I'm thinking, well, I've got two choices to make. If I'm going to make it in England, um, I've got to work at it. Or I go back home to Tunisia and I'm, you know, I get back to my club there and I'll be fine. Uh, I've always uh, been determined to keep going forward and I, I've uh, overcome a lot of obstacles uh, to get to where I need to get to. Uh, so when I got my injury, was the uh, first thing I wanted to develop my English uh, first, my, uh, the language. I wasn't really grasped uh, the language very well. And the other side of it is the football language is quite different from the normal, normal English language, you know. I was in the dressing room with Ted McMinn at Burnley Football Club and Ted McMinn, Scottish thick accent and every other word is F word. I've never been told the F word, word in, uh, in school in Tunisia. So, uh, so yeah, so I got to uh, coaching uh, while I'm injured. Uh, I get my treatment in the day and I work on my fitness in the day. And then uh, at night time, I work three nights a week for Burnley Centre of Excellence. You know, I appreciated their help for me as well. And that's probably where I got me to grasp my English and to get into coaching quite early on. And when I started doing my coaching, um, sorry, taking my under 14, 15, 13 at, at Burnley Football Club, then I had to be qualified. I've, I've, I really enjoyed it. I thought it's something that I want to do. And that's how I started doing my coaching badges quite early on. So I was playing for a good 10 years, uh, still playing and coaching as well. So uh, I used to three nights a week, uh, an hour and a half every, uh, every and then weekend actually when footballers have a rest day, I used to take a team to Carlisle or to Oldham or to Rochdale or Preston uh, to take a, a Burnley team in the Centre of Excellence where we used to play on a Sunday, which they still do, I think. So that's how I got uh, into coaching. And, um, and that put me definitely at, at 35 or 36 when I first got my managerial job at Northwich Victoria as a player manager. 
I had thousands of, uh, of session, training sessions under my belt. So I, I had uh, 100,000 of uh, team talks. And uh, that definitely, uh, because it could be daunting for someone who's never done that to be speaking to a group of players. So that definitely uh, gave me a lot of help to be successful probably in my first job. That's what I was going to ask you because when Neil uh, Redfern left and then Paul Warhurst was there for a couple of games, you stepped up as caretaker, knowing full well the trouble the club was in. I think they had like two points from 17 games, 15 points to drift to safety. You come in, pick up points, lead them to safety and you got the Manager of the Year award as well. I was going to ask how you would inspire such a stunning turnaround, but you, you were obviously able to draw on all that experience you had and then utilise it. And how did you find that sort of first, first experience? I always look, look back at that because uh, it's, uh, I always review and, how, uh, and, and I'm amazed what I've done that season. I'm absolutely amazed because, like you said, the odds was, uh, I think they stopped, being, they stopped betting against the, the, the team going down. Um, I had a choice that I've always... Uh, wanted management after my playing career and uh, what I knew at the time was one thing I knew I think I picked up one of my courses I remember Howard Wilkinson's talking about your first job uh, and he's telling us uh, uh, every, you probably all of you will get a ch one chance at it uh, not many managers come back if they fail in their first job you see it so often I, I yeah. remember Howard Wilkinson saying that and uh, and obviously you know the chairman there at Northwich at the time they're trying to go to an administration there's so many problems I had million reasons to fail and then I thought well I didn't plan to be here I'm here maybe that's a sign so uh, uh, you back yourself I back myself and um, and I changed what I need to change and look back at it now how was I successful that year I don't think I was good at all uh, I think is pure determination pure edge uh, I think uh, I took uh, it was absolutely no room for failure and I, I've done whatever it takes to win that first year it wasn't experience I was no experience in management it wasn't really tactical know-how or it just pure uh, inspired my players probably with my work ethic with my determination to uh, uh, to stand up to certain adversity and uh, like I said, I think uh, we finished the second half, we got to January, somehow, galvanised the team, the club upside, uh, inside out, really, um, gave the fans, the fans will see something happening, and then got momentum, and then I think we went to 12 games unbeaten, and then we start winning, picking points against everybody, thinking, wow, we end up staying with the game to spare, actually, so uh, it was an unbelievable achievement, and I still say that is my best achievement in football, it takes a lot of doing to do that. It's unfortunate what happened to the club afterwards. Uh, but yeah, that experience probably gave me the test and to get awarded by the manager of the league award in your first season. We were looking at some of the managers who were in the division at the time of your first season. As well as yourself, we had uh, Paul Tisdale, uh, Steve Evans, uh, Clough and Chris Wilder as well. And you've all gone on into the Football League. We were hotbed of managers. Do you remember facing them at, at this point? I think you drew two with Wilder, I think, when he was at Halifax. Yeah, my first game was against Tisdale. Uh, we drew Ninil, was on TV. Uh, I keep in touch with every one of those managers. Uh, we go back a long way. Nigel Clough, I remember beat them at Burton 3-1. He was very complimentary of my team. Chris Wilder actually uh, would beat them. To the, the, they'd gone down that season. Uh, they, uh, they had 10 points deduction, I think. Uh, but they were still above us. And uh, we managed to catch them up and they end up going down that season. So, so Chris Wilder know that he actually uh, took a couple of my plays as well in January. And, uh, and I've actually had the upper hand on Chris Wilder. He will tell you that himself. And I remember we beat Stephen John on Tuesday night uh, in April. That's the game where he kept us up. And he texts me after the game saying uh, it's unbelievable achievement. I remember his words actually. He's saying, F me, do you know? You needed snookers. How did you manage that? Uh, he sent me text after that game and I still remember his text so uh, no I think uh, it was uh, actually I never looked back at it that way but all those managers gone on and uh, yeah he's, uh, I was a baby manager band compared to them at the time and uh, yeah we are where we are Nigel uh, we played them this season FA Cup they be, uh, had a drink with me here they beat us 1-0 um, I keep in touch with Paul Teaser I keep in touch with all those managers I think uh, yeah, so uh, full, funny how football goes. You then uh, formed a great partnership with Graham Wesley. You returned to Stevenage. I think you were first in coach and assistant manager. You went from non-league to League One. You won the FA Trophy. And you went on to Preston. 
What is it about that your partnership with Wesley? What is, what is it that makes you you guys tick? Obviously, I, Graham signed me as a player. I played for him for four or five years at Stevenage. Uh, he knows me very well. Uh, he knows how well I've done my first managerial job. So after the Northwich uh, Victoria problems, uh, to be fair to me, he was persistent on my case. Um, I knew I want to go and manage. I had, uh, like I said, a few job offers there. But he's persistent, really, and the chairman at the time, um, on the phone every day, basically, to come and, uh, and help him. I think in 2008, they didn't start well, actually. When I joined them, they were 18th or 19th in the league. They didn't start well at all. I saw the potential, um, and I decided to join him, uh, from manager to being his assistant with him. And I think uh, I came back, we brought a couple of players together, and then we went uh, straight away, went on 24 games unbeaten. I'm not saying it's me, <laughs> it's just coincidence, maybe. But we went, to, we went from 19th, we ended up that season in the playoffs, we lost the playoffs to Cambridge, and then we won the trophy final at Wembley. Uh, we had unbelievable and finished the season. Uh, and then the following season, we, we won the conference, and then uh, we got promoted to League Two, and then from League Two, we got promoted again to League One, and then when we left to Preston, we were fifth in League One. What's the secret at the time, I think, uh, me and Graham, similar in certain way and different in other ways. Like any partnership, we complemented each other. I knew what he needed. Uh, I knew his strengths and his weaknesses. And as much as he knew my strengths and weaknesses as well. And that uh, partnership worked really well for those years. It serves its purpose. A uh, very, very successful period. Uh, but in Graham's uh, mind, and my mind always, uh, is always not going to last there because uh, I was never going to be a number two for a very long time. He knew that. And, uh, but at the time we're together, I think I've learned a lot from him and from, from that position as well. He helped me now as a manager, being a number two, uh, understand with my staff how we work and everything else. So uh, I think it's good for, uh, it's a good experience for me and uh, it's good for any other manager to go start coaching first as a manager, first team coach before you take your first managerial job because uh, you understand where you're coming from when you start talking to you a certain way about certain things. You've been there, you've done it you got your expectations, so uh, I think sometimes when you jump in straight as a manager, you never know what it's like to be an assistant or a first-team coach, so that gave me good grounding as well in making me a better manager now. Did they approach you for that job, or did you hear it become available and thought, I'll go for this? No, uh, well, how, uh, I, think, uh, I think I left South, Southport because I was living down south, and uh, my little baby daughter, she was born, and my wife wasn't coping well, and... It was a big commitment. I couldn't do the job in terms of, you know, uh, my little girl and my... Uh, I had my boy who was young at the time, 18 months, and my little girl now, she was just born. Uh, commitment to the family and the football. I, I'm, I commit so much into football. It wasn't the right time for me to be travelling away from my family. My family is the first and foremost, always. Uh, then when, when I left Southport, then we end up... Uh, I rejoined with Graham for a short period to go to Newport. That didn't work out well at all. And then, uh, and then that's when uh, I think um, I was out of a job for three, four months, maybe. I'm as, qua as qualified as any manager in, in the Premiership. I've got my pro license, I've got every qualification going. I've got my experience behind me. And you're waiting for that Football League job or good conference job to come in. And you look at that, I fancy, don't fancy that. After five, six months, you get bored, you get restless and... Uh, and then you get the call from Nonitin, and I look at Nonitin, and I'm thinking, wow, they, I remember the Nonitin, they used to be a good conference club. They were second from bottom, I think, or, or bottom of the conference north. Big trouble, I'm thinking, what am I doing? Uh, then what sold it to me, um, I remember talking to one of my friends, and he, he told me, listen, sitting at home is not going to make you a better manager. You back yourself. You, you sitting at home waiting for the right job is not making you any better now. And that always clicked in my mind and I kept that and I thought, yeah, I'll take that, I'll back myself. What encouraged me to take the job, they were full-time, no need at the time. And I knew in a full-time setup, having the players at my disposal the whole week, I can develop a winning team any time. And uh, like I said, I think that's what the, the sold it to me, they were full-time. And I went there and I did what uh, I do and, uh, and got them winning and we end up in an unbelievable run again. Uh, winning manager of the month in, in term only three four months I was there we left them I think a point outside the playoff um, and then obviously you know Steven is how he came about obviously uh, Phil Wallace know me very well uh, I was assistant at Steven is, uh, he, he, he knows me as a player he knows my character he knows everything and I think uh, his first call to me he says blimey do you know wherever you go you do a lot of winning they were his words 
uh, he says, uh, I want some of that my football club. And that's how I got that job. So I couldn't turn it down. Uh, my local team I played for, I spent 15 years there as a player, first team, a uh, player, a coach, a manager, assistant manager. I've done every job there. Um, I went there in my first season. I've got them 70 points and 20 wins out of 46. So I think in my first season there, we, we had a hugely successful season with the structure, with the with the resource we had, with our small budget and everything else. We missed out the playoff by a late, late goal in Newport at Morecambe, uh, 93rd minute. I think that's, that's a point, wasn't it? A point. Yeah. We missed out with the, with the goal. Like I remember, we scored the goal for Newport, and that uh, that was the uh, last day of the season. So, so my first season of football league with Stevenage. Uh, I think that was the, the most Stevenage football club has the tally in the football league is 70 points. Brilliant season, my first season, and I've told at the end of the season, my, my chairman, I told him, listen, I brought you a lot of winning to the football club. That's your first season in football, in, in football league, you win 20 games. We just came short with one point. I said, we ran out of time, basically, at the end of that season. And uh, we'll go again the following season. So you sometimes see that a manager does so well, and then the expectations are so high. And then it came earlier this season, and you left in September. Were you disappointed at how it ended? Would you have done anything differently? I was disappointed. I was, uh, I was, uh, I was disgusted actually, because uh, seven games. I mean, seriously, uh, Stevenage won't be where they are now if I stay there. Everybody know that. I know that. I wouldn't have 22 points out of whatever games. The worst bit of it is we had a tough, tough preseason where I lost eight of my first team players who I finished the season with. Eight play, eight starters. I've lost in pre-season and, uh, and that's probably I end up playing a lot of 17, 18 year olds in those tough games against Bradford or into way, uh, Mansfield where we had some tough fixture c came up in the start of that season and I felt uh, well the club surely will, uh, they know what, uh, what I'm about, they know that why we weren't winning this, those first seven games and that's just another lesson for those chairmen who uh, make a quick, quick decision after seven games, after seven games like you said I, I, was, uh, I was disgusted really. Uh, but it's another learning bit and uh, you move on from it, I moved on, they are what they are now and uh, it's a shame but I'm in a great football club now and uh, it's a big job, tough job like always is and I'm cracking on with it. I think it was only 10 days between the jobs, you're straight back into it. I think you were the fifth manager in a year, did the high turnover of managers Put you off at all? Did you have any reservations? Or? No, no. It's uh, what we do as managers. We we're not as smart as we everybody see. We we just we back ourselves against impossible tasks sometimes, because our job is all about backing ourselves. If you are if you're not confident, you don't back yourself. You won't become a manager. Where have I failed? As a manager, I haven't failed yet. Touch wood. Yeah, I got sacked from Stevenage after seven games, but that was ridiculous. I mean. Uh, with the circumstance and everything else, uh, I knew if I had um, another another five games, I would have produced winning to them. Um, but I've, I've been quite successful in, in terms of my managerial career. I haven't won anything for the team. I won personal tr personal trophies, but um, I haven't got a I haven't got a promotion yet on my CV. I haven't won a trophy. I, that's that's my next task, which I will do with this football club. And do you think the journey you've been on can open doors to like a next wave of Tunisian managers or, or African managers to come over to England and prove they can do it? Do you think what you've done, you're sort of a pioneer, I guess? Well, I, I'd, like, I'd like to think so. I'm the only one, I think, from who played in Africa and grew up in Africa, Arab, who came in to manage in the Football League. Um, but I've overcome a lot of obstacles and I'm doing that every day to try to... Uh, not to prove to anybody really, to prove myself that I can, I can carry on doing what I'm doing and get better every year, every, all the time. I don't think myself as, uh, you know, I just think a normal person, just who I am, what I am and cracking on with the job. Of course there is obstacle, of course there is, a, uh, I'm aware of how difficult it is for an ethnic minor, minority manager to be successful in the football league. Uh, not many of us there, I'm aware of that. Uh, but no, I don't really think about it all the time. It's just something that I'm aware of. I'm, uh, I'm fortunate to be at a good job. And, uh, and the honour on me to do well and to crack on and get the next big job. Cool. Dino, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very Thank much. You very Thank much you very much for your time. So best of luck for the rest of the season. Thank you very much. Appreciate Thanks. it.